Hey, welcome to the shop. So I've always been curious about these filler rods that you can use just with a propane torch to repair aluminum. Have I wasted a small fortune on welding equipment for my home shop and I should have just bought a torch from the plumbing aisle? Let's find out. All right, so let's talk about the difference between welding and what we're doing here, which is actually not welding. It's more of a soldering process. Now, you might call it brazing, but this actually happens at a temperature below 840 degrees Fahrenheit or 450 degrees Celsius, which makes it a soldering process. Now, when you do braze or solder something, rather than melting the actual base metal, your actual part, you heat it up and then you use that to heat a material that melts at a lower temperature than it does and then that will bond to your base metal and create your joint but you don't actually melt away or affect the boundary around that joint or your base metal when you're welding you actually heat it up so look here on this TIG weld as I run along I'm creating a pool of molten metal before I add any filler metal to it Right, and then I can move along as I weld. Where with this, I won't be creating that weld pool. So let's go ahead and set this up with a 1 8 inch plate uh, set up in a T-joint, and I've just clamped everything together here. And I'm gonna use my propane torch and start heating it up. And as I heat it up, I'll uh, just keep trying to add this rod until it gets hot enough that it'll start to melt. And when it does, I'll think back to reading the instructions and it shows to use the rod to break up the oxide layer and kind of rub it on there. So once it's hot enough to melt it, I'll just move back and forth across here and it's actually creating a nicer joint than I expected. Not a bad little fillet right on there. So that went better than I thought. Now, to give us something to compare to, I've gone ahead and welded up one side of a T-joint here, and we're gonna just try to bend these open and break them from the root side, just welded on one side, just to see what happens. Here with the aluminum weld joint, I got it clamped in, and you can see the aluminum starting to bend around, so it's holding up at least a little bit. And then I'll turn it around and keep working on it with my hammer, and it snapped right in two. You can see that it failed right through the middle of that little tiny fillet, so it was bonded really well to both sides. That fillet just wasn't uh, large enough, really, to hold the load that we needed. Let's try the same test with that TIG weld. And I can work on this quite a bit. And because it's that larger fillet weld and it's welded clear into the root of the joint there, um, I can bend this clear over uh, basically without having uh, anything come apart. So definitely a uh, win there. Now what if we were to use the Aluma weld on both sides? So I've got another one set up here and I'll go ahead and heat it up and apply the rod here on the front side like we did before. Let it flow right in there and then I'll go around on the back side and it's basically hot enough to do this already. Um, they will use the torch a little bit and heat it up and get everything in place. So now that that is um, put together, you can see it's really not a bad looking little joint for what it is. I'll go ahead and pound around on this and see uh, what happens there. And it bent clear over and held up. So while we can see that there's some strength here, what we don't know is how would this hold up if it was bent back and forth in an actual application or uh, if there's corrosion around, we don't really know how that's gonna work out. But uh, anyway, it's holding up and it's stronger than I kind of expected it to be. Now let's try this out on a lap joint. So lap joints are really where brazing and soldering processes often excel. But the way that this works here, where you've got to break up that oxide layer that's floating on top of your material, is kind of a strange phenomenon. But I've set up a little lap joint here, and I have started to apply some of this uh, material here as I heat it. And it's uh, wicking its way in. 
um, and, and forming on the top. I mean, it's super strange how you can see it kind of work its way underneath that oxide layer and, and break it up. I've taken this lap joint and broken it apart and you can see where the aluma weld traveled up underneath that oxide layer, but it wasn't able to get in and actually join the two together because it wasn't there. And that's kind of the way this works without using any kind of a flux or, or anything like that on aluminum. So it's different than if you were to be, you know, brazing something where you had a flux in there and it could break up that oxide layer. You kind of have to mechanically do it. Let's play with that a little bit. So I've set up a piece of material here and I am heating it up until I can just dab a little of this on. We can see how that travels underneath that oxide layer and I'll keep pushing that in here. You can see this thing blowing up like a balloon here uh, underneath that oxide layer. It's really kind of fun to play with, but that just kind of shows how it works and then I can push this around and, and break that up uh, manually. So um, really to get a good joint, it seems like you do have to have access to be able to break up that oxide layer a little bit to make it bond. So let's take a look at the classic demo that they show in the commercials here. And so I have a pop can and a punch here. I'll knock a hole in the bottom of it and then start heating it up. It's not quite hot enough to melt the filler metal, but uh, whoa, looks like it's getting hot pretty fast. Oh no, <laughs> it caught on fire a little bit. Anyway, I guess maybe I need to turn my torch down just a little bit for this uh, more delicate material, but let's try it one more time. Here uh, I've got the torch turned down a little bit and I'm starting to, to melt my uh, Luma weld on there and it, it is actually bridging over that big hole. So that's kind of cool. I mean, typically I would replace my pop cans rather than trying to repair them, but uh, it's still pretty interesting. Anyway, so we got some stuff gooped on there. Let's, let's test this repair out and see how it holds up. So I'm adding some water in here just to see and uh, you know, it's dripping out the bottom. So eh, don't blame that on the Aluma Weld. I'm, I'm new at running this and uh, maybe didn't quite get everything washed in there uh, just right. But you know, in all reality, it actually worked better than I expected it to. And I think, you know what, maybe there'll come a time when I wanna pull some out to, to do some little repair or something like that, who knows. But uh, for now, I'm gonna stick with the welding for the most part. Hey, well, thanks for tuning in today. If you liked this video, let me know by hitting that thumbs up below and we'll see you next time.